Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to St Mary's Vicarage on this Saturday, the 26th of September. And a gloriously sunny day outside. Uh, lots of lovely sunlight pouring through the Vicarage windows here, though, of course, it is quite chilly outside. That autumn feel uh, is definitely um, in the air. But uh, looks like we're in for a, for a nice sunny weekend. Uh, Mrs Vicarage is already out and about in the garden, um, pottering about. Uh, and um, uh, so hope could be a good weekend. Now, yesterday after the uh, live broadcast, I went down to uh, Mintin Farm and met with um, Badger and we sort of walked around and did um, a full risk assessment for the uh, Harvest Festival uh, tomorrow. Uh, we're following the guidelines that are laid out by local authorities for charitable events, which means you can have more than 30 people uh, attending uh, an event, providing a full risk assessment has been done and COVID uh, <coughs> restrictions are in place. Um, so that will all be there. So if you're coming tomorrow, um, as you arrive at the farm, please follow uh, the stewards to the marked parking area that will uh, be there and then down to where the service is going to happen, which is going to be round the sort of round house that um, is there. So we're overlooking all the fields and such like. Um, do bring your own seating if you wish, but Badger is going to be putting out some uh, trestle tables as well, so they will be available. And of course, it's important to remember that um, uh, groups uh, attending the service um, uh, have to be uh, a group of six. You cannot be more than six people if you're coming um, as a group. And um, preferably that should be from uh, one household, though at the moment that's not a legal requirement, um, but it is a, 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 a advisable in that sense. Um, and uh, of course, uh, there will be hand sanitizer that you'll have to use uh, when we come in and we will have to be um, <coughs> socially uh, distancing. Uh, we'll also be broadcasting the service as well tomorrow um, online too so people can join in at home and watch the service. I've checked the signal strength down there and I think we're all um, good for that. Now we're not going to be able to sing uh, hymns as normal but we are going to use uh, pre-recorded uh, music. I've downloaded some uh, brass band music and such like uh, for the service tomorrow which is a simple uh, family service so I do hope some young people will come along um, as well tomorrow and um, join in the fun um, down at the farm. <clears throat> now normally we would offer hospitality um, after a service like this and um, uh, Badger would normally be very keen uh, to do so but unfortunately with the Covid regulations uh, distributing um, food to people is really not possible um, we'd have to follow all of the very stringent guidelines that pubs and restaurants um, need to follow. So we're not going to be doing that tomorrow. However, if you'd like to bring your own flask of coffee or tea and some biscuits or a bit of cake for your group, your bubble that is coming to the service uh, tomorrow and you'd like to share that, um, obviously with your own group, you'd like to have that uh, tomorrow, then please feel free to bring your own coffee and tea and biscuits and such like. Uh, what we can't do is share it with one another, uh, unfortunately. Um, but of course, um, there will be produce available for sale tomorrow. So as you're leaving the event, um, of course, if you want to buy some of the uh, Cranbourne Chase cider and other bits and pieces that are there, I saw that Badger had a lot of um, uh, pumpkins and other <coughs> um, uh, items there for sale as well. Tomorrow, of course, you can buy those there as you would um, normally be able to buy them and take them home and consume them uh, <coughs> at home. So I hope um, it'll be a very different harvest but it's really good that we're doing something and I think it's really quite important too that we're also celebrating harvest um, on a farm which is great particularly a local farm. Um, so that will be happening uh, this coming Sunday. Uh, the following Sunday is uh, Wood Yates and Pentridge harvest and that will be happening at the barn in Wood Yates. Uh, very similar uh, regulations. There'll be an area where you park your car. If you're uh, attending, you mustn't attend in more than a group of six from your own particular <coughs> household. And unfortunately, we won't be able to, there is a bit of a tradition at um, Pentridge of having 
uh, cheese and cider and bread afterwards. Uh, we won't be able to do that. But again, if you want to bring your own uh, flask of tea or <coughs> coffee or something, um, then of course that is um, fine. We won't be singing hymns either at Pentridge, um, but Penwood Brass will be playing harvest music for us. So hopefully that will um, raise the spirits as well. So it's really great that despite the restrictions, we're able to do this and we are following the um, guidelines. In fact, you can just see behind me that, that red and this thing here, um, that is the risk, full risk assessment that uh, Badger and I did uh, yesterday <coughs> for... Um, uh, for the service. So uh, really looking forward to that. Um, it is going to be sunny tomorrow but it, there is a chill in the air. Uh, we think we're hoping the wind has dropped but uh, we are on quite an exposed site at Minchin Farm so please do wrap up warm if you're coming along. Please do wrap up, uh, wrap up warm um, for that. And uh, we'd ask that you don't bring any animals. Please don't bring dogs uh, with you on this occasion. Um, because obviously there are farm animals around, cattle and such like, and um, though they're being sort of put into other areas, uh, we don't want to risk the fact of a, a, a dog getting loose and uh, worrying the cattle um, that are there. So uh, just um, be aware of that. Anyhow, hopefully <coughs> all will go well tomorrow and we will have our um, harvest festival. Now, of course, our thoughts and minds, I'm sure, have been uh, with the very uh, sad and shocking news about the police sergeant that was um, murdered uh, on duty in his own police station <coughs> um, yesterday, uh, very early yesterday morning, and uh, thinking of his family and friends and colleagues um, at this time. Um, uh, thankfully, as, as we know, these things are rare occurrences in, in this country. Uh, because of the much tighter controls we have and gun laws that we have in this country, uh, thankfully uh, so. But they are always a, a, a huge shock when uh, something like this um, uh, happens. So uh, we're mindful of that uh, police station in Croydon <coughs> and um, his family and colleagues um, at this time uh, and the, very, uh, the, the difficulties they will be um, and trauma they will be going through uh, at the loss of, uh, of, their, uh, of their colleague. So um, <coughs> uh, let's have a look at the reading uh, for today. I, I'm not sure if we have a, let's just have a quick look. I think we have a Saints Day today, but I could be wrong. Uh, 26. Um, <coughs> uh, well, it's, uh, well, yes, actually the 26th today we comm commemorate um, Wilson Charlie, uh, founder of the Church Army. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the Church Army, it's not the Salvation Army. Uh, the Church Army is a wing of the Church of England um, and in a sense is in uh, uniform. And I've had privilege of, uh, over my career, working with several Church Army officers. Most recently, um, Debbie Orris, who was part of our rural missions uh, team. She's gone on to another uh, role, but she was uh, responsible for developing um, pioneer ministers in this uh, diocese uh, and thanks to her hard works and efforts we've now got uh, a lot more new pioneer pioneer ministers as a lay people who've been trained in outreach ministry <coughs> and um, uh, they're working in uh, parishes and benefices around this diocese and that project is is continuing so it's great uh, let me just read this. So, uh, Wilson uh, Charlie was born in 1847 in Brixton. He suffered from a spinal weakness all his life, which hampered his education. After a serious illness, he began to treat his religion more seriously and became confirmed in the Church of England. He acted as organist to Ira uh, Sankey uh, during the Moody and Sankey missions and in 1881 was ordained priest, serving his curacy at St Mary Abbot's in Kensington, together with a dozen other curates. The lack of contact between the church and the working classes was a cause of real concern to him, and he began uh, outdoor preaching. In 1882, he resigned his curacy and founded the church army, four years after, founding, uh, four years after the founding of the Salvation Army. Under his influence, it thrived and he continued to take part in its administration until a few weeks before his death on this day 
1942. So we remember Wilson uh, um, Carley, um, not Charlie, sorry, Wilson Carley, the foundation uh, founder of the church army today. Now moving on to uh, <coughs> our uh, Bible reading um, for today. Yesterday we had that uh, splendid passage from Ecclesiastes and um, I'm going to read a little bit more from Ecclesiastes because we don't we don't hear a lot of it and it is a beautiful uh, book. It really is a wonderful book of wisdom uh, within the uh, uh, within the Bible. And today it's Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 11, beginning to read at verse nine. And um, it's uh, remember your creator in the days of your youth before the dust returns to the earth and the breath of God. It's a beautiful um, passage, uh, this. Rejoice in your youth, you who are young. Let your heart give you joy in your young days. Follow the promptings of your heart and the desire of your eyes. But this you must know, for all these things God will bring you to judgment. Cast worry from your heart, shield your flesh from pain. Yet youth and age of dark hair is vanity, and remember your creator in the days of your youth, before evil days come and the years approach when you say, these give me no pleasure before the sun and light and moon and stars grow dark and the clouds return after the rain. The day when those who keep the house tremble and strong men are bowed, when the women grind no longer at the mill because day is darkening at the windows and the street doors are shut. When the sound of the mill is faint when the voice of the bird is silenced and song notes are stilled, when to go uphill is an ordeal and a walk is something to dread. Yet the almond tree is in flower and the grasshopper is heavy with food and the carper bush bears its fruit <clears throat> while man goes to his everlasting home and the mourners already walking to the street, forth in the street. Before the silver cord has snapped, or the golden lamp be broken, or the pitcher shattered at the spring, or the pulley cracked at the well, or before the dust returns to the earth as it once came from it, and the breath of God who gave it. Vanity of vanities, the preacher says, all is vanity. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> A beautiful verse, uh, verses of scripture there, uh, reminding us of our uh, own mortality and uh, existence uh, and how that we are um, pilgrims on this road for but such a short time uh, and then we return uh, to God. A reminder too that uh, in that, that uh, we are to make the most of the gift of life um, that is given to us, uh, both uh, in the celebration of God and in the service of others and in the joy of the gift of life that is given to us. Very beautiful uh, passage. Um, it'll be a passage that is very familiar to some. So uh, <clears throat> um, I hope you have a really good day today. As I say, the uh, the weather is out. I've got to um, pop along to Blamford uh, in a bit and get some things ready uh, for tomorrow. Um, so do join us if you're not coming down to Minton Farm at uh, 10 o'clock. I, I suggest try and arrive around about half past nine. Um, don't leave it till the last minute if possible. Um, because we need to park cars and get people into the area where we're going to have the service. Um, and uh, we look forward to seeing you there. And those who are going to join us online, then um, uh, we'll be live, hopefully all being well, and tech working at um, 10 o'clock. So um, let us pray this morning. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for this new day. We give thanks for our families and friends, for the community in which we live. 
we pray lord for our harvest festival for handley and st andrews tomorrow we give thanks for rural life for our farmers and we pray lord for our communities we're mindful lord and we pray for our police forces today we pray particularly for the station in Croydon as they come to terms with the shocking murder of a colleague. We pray for his family and friends at this time. <clears throat> we pray, Lord, for our young people away at college and universities and the restrictions many of them are facing in their student life. We pray, Lord, that you will watch and guard over us as we continue through this time of trial and uncertainty. We ask your blessings upon us this day. And we pray, Lord, and give thanks for the work of the church army, for Wilson, Carly and all that he did. We pray for church army officers in our diocese today. Lord, be with us this day and always. Amen. So thank you for being with me uh, this morning. I uh, hope you have a good day. Let's just finish with the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. God bless everybody. Have a good day. <laughs>